Hello, welcome to today's edition of the Academy. Today we're going to finish up chapter 4 of Sun Tzu's Art of War. Okay, uh, It's only 20 sentences long, we're going to focus on 17 and 18. Um, in this particular case, we're, um, this one may be a little more... Um, yeah, I don't want to use the word intellectual, but it's definitely... This one's a thinking video. These two sentences are pretty important, the way they're, they're phrased. And I, th I think he makes a strong point, but it requires some thought, and, uh, for lack of a better term, meditation. Um, I don't mean, you know, uh, spiritual meditation kind of stuff. I mean just contemplating what is it he's trying to get at, and how do you apply it in your scenarios. So, let's go ahead and just get started with number se uh, sentence number 17. In respect to the, mi uh, sorry, in respect of military method, we have, firstly, measurement. Secondly, estimation of quantity. Thirdly, calculation. Fourthly, balancing of chances. And fifthly, victory. Sentence 18. Measurement owes its existence to earth. Estimation of quantity to measurement. Calculation to estimation of quantity. And balancing of chances to calculation. And victory to balancing of chances. So he takes these five elements of military method and kind of puts them in a hierarchy and shows what's dependent upon what. So let's just start at the beginning and build on from there. So he starts first with measurement. And he says measurement owes its existence to Earth. Now if you remember back to the very first episode, uh, chapter one, part one, we covered the five um, elements, for lack of a better term, Earth was one of them. Now, Earth was referring to uh, the space, the, the distances, the measurements, the type of terrain, things like that that, that affect your movement, the physical, uh, the physicality of the battlefield. Okay, distances, line of sight blocking, movements uh, impacting terrain, things like that. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> with that comes measurement. You need to be able to measure. You need to be able to quantify the effect of the distances. You know, can you cover the distance required in the scenario with the units you have in the condition they're in? <clears throat> which units can cover it, which can't? Which units can move the distance you need to through the terrain? Which, which units need to be where to get past or around line of sight blocking terrain? You need to quantify these different things, measure them, okay? Secondly, you need the estimation of quantity. So, now that you've done all the measurements, now you need to look at the estimation of quantity. Look at the estimation of your opponent's forces and abilities with yours. It's all estimation. You can't mathematically figure this out um, except through, well, on the tabletop, you can probably use unit values of various things, but in the real life you can't. <clears throat> you have to estimate. Uh, the quantities of combat capability, what's going to be able to move where, when, okay, without knowing how things are affected by the measurements that you've done, you're not going to have good estimates uh, of what combat capability will be available where on the battlefield by when. Thirdly, calculation. <clears throat> so having all these estimations in place, now you start doing some calculations of yourself in your head. Uh, this is about goes back to planning. The calculations a couple videos back, um, he who calculates more, it's, you know, wins, right? Uh, makes more calculations in the, his temple, was the, uh, the way the uh, chapter ended. Here, you're planning. What are the plan A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, and then double A on forward. So, what are the things that can happen based on these estimations you've done? What could go wrong? What could go right? What do you have that could you know, play well in that particular uh, estimation you've got. Come up with different plans. Because again, you don't know what your opponent's going to do until he does it. Not for sure, right? You can guess, but you don't know for sure. So have plans, series of plans, to know how you're going to respond to what you see. Now, once you've done that, you move on to the fourth one, which is balancing of chances, or risk. It's just a risk evaluation. <clears throat> when you've got these different plans, which ones are more risky than others? Where is the payoff greater? Um, given what you could give up, what could you get back? This is really something 
that uh, a lot of tabletop generals get challenged with because they tend to throw a lot of at risk where they're not going to get necessarily a lot of reward. Um, it's a good thing to, you know, there's this case, you know, you know, go big or go home kind of thing. The greater the risk, the greater the reward kind of stuff. That is true normally. However, there are many situations where the risk is very great and the reward is actually pretty small. So, balance those chances. Think in, you know, in terms of mathematics. All the gaming systems, they all have values for different things. There's different ways to do combat resolution in the different gaming systems. And so, use those to give yourself an estimate of the chances of success. That's really what you're going for here. And then figure out how to maximize those. Where's, where's your risk reward greatest, right? And finally, victory. So having done all those earlier things well, you are more likely to win. Okay? And you can't win unless you've done the balance of the risk evaluation well. You can't do risk evaluation well unless you've done your planning well. You can't do planning well unless you've estimated your opponent's capabilities and your own capabilities. You can't do that well unless you've evaluated the you know, measured the impact of the terrain, the physical battlefield itself, and you can't do that unless you understand how the physical battlefield affects battle. Okay, so you see the way Sun Tzu lay all this together, he ties it very, very well with a concept that he laid out very, very beginning of the book in chapter one. So, give yourself a chance to go back to that first video and re, you know, listen again on the the Earth, then come back to this one, take a look at the. Uh, this this 17 and 18 sentences and see if you can kind of piece the things together again uh, again if you have your own copy even better read it yourself and try to see again how it applies to your tabletop all right thanks for sticking with me you can comment below let me know what you think give me ideas uh, share like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next edition of the academy bye bye